All right, so this is going to be a two-part series on cart paths. Uh, part one, I'm going to show you uh, what's unique about cart paths and how we're going to tackle those um, because they are kind of different than the other shapes we do. And part two, I'm actually going to show you me doing them on the Hershey Country Club. So let's get started. So let me bring up Inkscape here. And if you recall, like order is very important. And cart paths are going to be one thing. It's pro they're probably on going to be on the very top. So you got a couple of decisions to make here. If you're gonna do your cart paths on a hole by hole basis, you could put them within the layer for your various holes. You just have to make sure that they're all the way at the top because they're gonna they're gonna cut through. Not that there's any issues with things cutting through cart paths, right? It won't cause any problems later on in Blender, but let's face it, your cart path should be on top of everything, okay? Your rough doesn't cut through a cart path. Your cart path is laid on top of everything else. Of course, though, you do not want cart paths ever cutting through a bunker, and you do not want cart paths cutting through a water body. If you remember why, it's because they had the inset. If you cut through that inset, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So remember, again, bunkers and water bodies are always on the top, top, top. So we got to be careful about that. Now, normally, a, a, a cart path isn't going to cut through a water body or bunker, but just be aware that it could happen and if you run into problems. What I like to do, though, is I like to put all my cart paths in one layer, and I can keep that layer towards the top. So in this case, I got hole one, which is at the top. Now I'm going to click Add Layer, and I get this new pop-up here. I'm going to say Above cur Current. I'm going to say Cart Paths Above Curtain. And above Curtain. Yeah, great. <laughs> above hole one, and here we go. So now, now I have my cart path layer, and I'm going to I can start drawing now. I'm just going to show you guys some things here, some theory behind cart pass and, and why we need to do things a certain way. So first of all, if we're creating a cart path and we had to trace it out like we have been doing, which is, so let's say we got this cart path here, and I had to trace it out like this and do like around the outside of the cart path, it's not going to look that great, right? Why is that? Well, because they have such a consistent width. And I'm being somewhat careful here. Let me just see here. And this cart path actually gets wider in this one spot here, which is, so this isn't exactly a good example, but, and now you can see if I change this to concrete, it's all right, but it's like, it gets a little bit wide here and then it's rounded on the end and it's just not quite right, okay? Wouldn't it be great if we could just like click in the middle here like this and go like right down the middle of the cart path to trace this out and then just have a consistent width the whole way, right? So if I do that and I end, so if I right click, it'll end the shape. Well, I get that because we're still drawing a shape that has some like fill properties to it. So let me delete that again. And now if we come up here to this little icon up here, which is our fill and stroke functionality here, you can see within fill um, that we've got because we don't have any objects selected, but actually let me let me draw a quick object here. And I'm not going to close it, so I'm not going to create it. I'm just going to end. If I right click, it'll end. And it this creates this object here, and it's got this straight weird line on it, but it's got a fill. And you might not be able to see it here, but I have fill selected, so it's filling this up. Now, if I turn that off, it looks like it disappears. Now, the object still exists. It just has no fill. It's got no filling to it, so that's why it's, it's see-through. But if I go over here to stroke paint and I hit this, look what happens. All of a sudden, what it does is it just makes a, a really thick line, okay? Um, so that's pretty cool, right? That can come in handy. What if we could draw cart paths with that? Well, it turns out that we can. Um, we just have to convert it later on. So let me talk to you about what I mean by that. So let me get rid of that. So now you can see how I enabled this. So I went into fill, I disabled fill, went into stroke, hit this box here for stroke, and I can also come over here to stroke style. And if you remember at the beginning of Inkscape, we set our Inkscape project so that we're working in millimeters versus pixels. So now our width, I had to set to 3.5 millimeters. One millimeter equals one meter. So this is a 3.5 meter width, basically cart path at this point. Now it looks a little wide for our purposes, so I can change that. Let me change it to three. Three, enter, and you can see it did narrow a little bit. Let's say 
I think most of these on here, and I've played with this, are 2.5. So let me just narrow that a little bit. So you can see that that actually reduced the width of that. Well, let me come back over here and I select my selector tool, and I may just delete this guy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this cart path right here. So I'm going to go back to my Bezier tool, and now I've got stroke enabled. And I'm going to start clicking down the middle of this cart path. And I'm being very deliberate like I was before with my other shapes. Okay. So now I'm going over here. And now I need to, I'm holding down my middle mouse button so you guys know to move that to kind of pan around there. I'm going to go this way. Now this area gets a little bit thicker here. And I'll show you how we can kind of work around that in a minute. This is hole one, so they made it the cart path there a little bit wider. Now, at the end of the day, you really don't need that much detail. But now, as you can see, I put that path there, and it matches it pretty well. I would say the width, right? And I could hide this and turn it on and off. So I think that 2.5, I experimented with this before, matches pretty well. And you could always come back in here and you could change this. You know, let me just show you an example. If I made it make this four way too wide, right? So let me change this back to 2.5, which is pretty good. Now, at this point, though, it's still a stroke. It's not a path. It's not a shape, okay? It's, this is essentially a line. In Blender, when we export, can't do that. So we actually have to do is we have to convert this to a path. It's very simple. And let me go back here so you guys can see. So right now, this says path, but this is actually a stroke. So we need to do up here, we go path, and of course it's popping up on the other screen here. But when I hit this menu, I don't know why Inkscape is doing this, the, the menu will pop down and one of the options is stroke to path. So I'm gonna select that. And you're gonna think, well, nothing really happened there, did it? Except watch when I come over here to my node tool. It is now a path just like all, all, all other objects here. See it has nodes around the outside. So that has now been turned into a path or a shape. And I can come down here and I can turn it into concrete. Okay. Now keep in mind if you hover over this or you select this, concrete has a 12 centimeter blend. And you're going to think, ah, I don't want to blend that, do I? Well you can actually you can just make it a hard edge in Unity. We'll talk about that later on, but it gives you the option of doing an edge or, or not a not a uh, not a blend. Um, and if you don't want to blend at all, you could always use one of this, like, here's a, a custom no blend over here. Okay. Um, but try it with the concrete and you'll see later on what that blend looks like and how you can manipulate it. So I said earlier, you can also manipulate this to make it wider. Well, what I could do is I could come over here and I could double click here, double click here. Then I could actually select, now well, do it, select this node. I'm going to hold down control and just give you an, guys an idea of how you can do some of this stuff. And now if I click and drag, you can see I can pull those guys out and I can make that section a little bit wider. So I'm gonna do a control, click, control, click, control, click. Actually, I think it's shift. Yep. And now I can drag all those out and I made that section a little bit wider, okay? So it matches a little bit closer. And I could do the same thing down here. This is kind of a funky cart path. Most cart paths don't get wider or like that. But I just wanted to show you guys how stroke works. Now, if you come back and now you need to draw another shape, let's say I need to draw a shape here for some reason. Um, maybe I'm making this like a, again, like that deep rough exception area that we talked about. Let me close this and like, oops, what do I got here? Well, all I have to do is come up here to my stroke and path layer. Okay, go over here to stroke, turn off stroke by hitting this X, and then make sure fill is turned on, and then I can change this again to whatever I want. So in this case, deep rough. Okay, so that's how I switch back. So now you guys know what a stroke is and how you use a stroke to create a cart path and how that gets converted to a path um, that you can then assign a, uh, a color to, for example, concrete. So move on to the next video and we will uh, spline out our paths or I will on Hershey Country Club and you could on on your two first two holes.